I'm University of Illinois agricultural economist Joe Jansen, and this is a five minute farm doc. Today we're tackling a hot topic in the corn market. Can we really have both massive planted acres and record yields this year? There's a common belief that when farmers plant more corn, they have to use lower quality fringe acres that drag down the national yield average. But is that actually true? Let's dive into the data and find out. So here's the situation. Corn prices have been getting a boost lately because old crop ending stocks are tightening up. But looking ahead, the USDA confirmed what everyone was thinking in March. They're expecting farmers to plant about 95.3 million acres of corn this year. And some analysts think the number could go even higher when the next report comes out in June. On top of that, USDA is predicting a national yield of 181 bushels per acre, which would be almost two bushels higher than last year's record. But wait, can we really have both? Does planting more acres mean using lower quality land that produces less corn? Well, let's talk about what we mean by fringe acres. When farmers plant more corn than usual, they have two options. Either switch acres from other crops like soybeans on land with the same yield potential as is typical for corn, or plant corn on land that wouldn't typically grow corn because it yields less than average. These lower yielding lands are what we call fringe or marginal acres. The conventional wisdom says more fringe acres should lead to lower national average yields. But what does the data actually show? Well, I analyzed corn acreage over the last 100 years, and it's quite a journey. Identifying fringe acres is a little bit difficult because where and what constitutes the fringe has changed over time. We actually used to plant over 100 million acres of corn uh, in the United States before the 1930s. Acreage fell until about 1970, stabilized for a couple of decades, and then jumped sharply in 2007 when the ethanol mandate kicked in. Since 2007, we've been averaging about 91 million acres of corn in the United States, with a slight upward trend. This means this year's projected 95.3 million acres are about 3.8 million above what we'd expect from trend. That's a lot of potential fringe acres. Even in years when corn acreage was similar to what we're expecting in 2025, yields have been both above and below trend. The data doesn't support the idea that more acres automatically means lower yields. But wait, what about regional differences? Doesn't it matter where the corn is planted? Well, I looked at Great Plains states from North Dakota down to Texas, typically considered the fringe, where yields run 20 to 40 bushels per acre below the national average. Corn acreage in these states has been steadily increasing by about 400,000 acres per year since 1990. Meanwhile, traditional uh, acres in the traditional corn belt have stayed comparatively flat. Even with the shift towards more acreage in traditionally lower yielding regions, national yields have continued their upward trend. When I specifically analyzed whether above trend acreage in the lower Great Plains correlates with lower national yield, I again found basically no relationship. Less than 1% of the yield variation can be explained by Great Plains acreage shifts. So what's the takeaway here? Well, weather is still king when it comes to yield. Those year-to-year -year swings in yield have much more to do with growing season conditions than with how many acres get planted and where. That means that USDA's trend line yield estimate of 181 bushels per acre is still perfectly reasonable, even with big planted acreage. Assuming normal weather, we're likely looking at corn inventories climbing back above 2 billion bushels by the end of the 25-26 marketing year. Without a major surge in demand, which seems unlikely in the current economic environment, this level of corn availability points to prices closer to long-term averages. Current new crop futures are trading around 450 a bushel, which is actually slightly above that long-run average. So there you have it. The data show that big acreage and big yields can absolutely go together. The conventional wisdom about fringe acres dragging down yields doesn't hold up when we look at historical evidence from national yield data. If you have found this analysis helpful, check out the full article on FarmDoc Daily and subscribe to the FarmDoc YouTube channel for more data-driven agricultural market insights. This has been a 5-Minute FarmDoc. I'm the University of Illinois' Joe Jansen.